Hey. What you doing? I'm Brandon Horwin. And I'm Sophie Williams. And today's special guest is... Hola. <laughs> My name is Luis Salgado. I'm right now in Puerto Rico, which is where I was born and raised. Um, COVID has brought me back to my homeland. I am a director, I'm a choreographer, I'm a performer, and I am a father. We are so thrilled to have you on today. Thank you so much for joining us on What You Doing, our newly launched podcast series. Um, Louise and I met at Axelrod Performing Arts Center in New Jersey. He's done some incredible work there and I'm excited to talk about that today. Um, but first I just want to go back a little bit with you and I would love if you can tell us a little bit about your journey through you know early life and getting involved in in the arts and theater and kind of a little bit about your path to where you are today. Yeah. So like I said, I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. Um, I lived here basically all my life. I, I, I had to go and travel to Hawaii. My father was in the army. So I visited him for a year when I was in fifth grade. That was the first time that I was encountered with having to learn English and, and, and trying to get by, trying to do that. Um, but then I quickly returned to Puerto Rico for many different reasons. One of them was the language. I, I didn't speak the English well, so my grades were going low and the whole thing. However, I am super grateful that that time gave me English in my life, right? Because now, then I, when I was 21, I moved to New York. Um, before that, between the age of nine and the age of 21, I discovered arts and it changed my life. I, I was very lucky to have a, a wonderful round teacher who exposed us to acting and singing and dancing and culture and folklore. So I, I, I became very passionate of Puerto Rico and of the arts um, through all that period of time. And then when I finally started traveling to New York, um, I fell in love with musical theater. And actually musical theater was challenging me to do acting and singing and dancing, oh my. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I realized very quickly that I wanted to move there and I wanted to, to learn more than pursue a career on Broadway. I wanted to learn from Broadway. So I, I moved to New York City and started taking classes at Broadway Dance Center and meeting people and auditioning. And all of a sudden, one thing led me to going to Japan, where I thought I was going to be there with three, four different artists. And somehow they all bailed. So here I was alone in Japan, but it, it turned out that I became like the star of that show. So it opened up my perspective um, in, the, in, in the field of, of the arts. Uh, I ended up choreographing, I ended up performing, I ended up creating a name for myself there. Um, and, and that gave me a different confidence. So when I came back to New York after that experience, my auditioning process was different and my way of presenting myself was different and started opening a lot of doors and that's the beginning. That is awesome. What an awesome story, especially. Um, if you hear that in the back, um, I, I was telling Brandon and Sophie before, um, I came to my dad's house today to, to, to build cement and create a little bit of a path to the ranch. So I bailed the last hour of work to my dad because I had this podcast. So if you hear that, that's my dad. He's still working. He's letting me know you should come back here. Oh, that's good. Um, that's great. That, you know, it's a great story and it really is. Sophie, do you have something next? Yeah. Um, so you are the founder of Salgado Productions, uh, which holds the motto, art with a purpose. Yeah. So I'll have your past productions kind of infuse this message that you set forth. Well, funny enough, thank you for pointing out Salgado Productions. I want to take a step back because when I introduced myself, I didn't talk about what I'm really the founder is of Revolución Latina, which is a nonprofit organization that empowers and inspires the Latino community through the arts. And I'm very, very proud of it. Um, because of that organization, I impacted so many lives that wanted to do performing arts. Um, and the organization is not about building performing artists, it's about inspiring people with the arts, that I was like, I need to start a company. 
So, so I started Salgado Productions with the idea of taking those people that we had inspired through the arts that actually were the potential artists um, that we could do theater with to give them a home where we could do theater. But it didn't work like that. Little did I know that um, I was going to be called upon a lot of choreographing and directing work using my company. So I ended up you know, traveling a lot of Latin America with Salgado Productions. And now we're rescuing more and more and more all of those beautiful artists that we have nurtured through almost 10 years now um, with Tagala Productions into, okay, let's really develop new work. Um, so that to anchor Salgado Productions in my life, but your main question reminded me was? Oh yeah, so how has art with a purpose kind of like been infused through your past production? So, so purpose is the thing I live for, right? Like. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to look at it now after the time that's been when, when we start is like, of course, purpose. And you think like all theater should have purpose, but you realize that not always, people are not always building the theater with deep purpose thinking process, if I'm making any sense. It's so easily done on the surface, especially in musical theater, because it's so complicated to sing and act and dance that you're, you, you end up spending a lot of time just in the technicality of acting and singing and dancing. And it almost feels going deep into the purpose of the work secondary. Um, so the intention when we created it was to not let that happen, to force ourselves in the doing of theater um, into going deep into the root of the why we're doing it, right? And if you ask the why enough, you'll tap into some really beautiful stones, right? That you have to discover for yourself. So something that I, I share often is that it, art, it's personal to me. And I believe that art should be very personal. That being said, I was teaching class yesterday with Andy Black and Mueller, and he was very quick to jump and be like, hey, let's remind everybody that we have to pay our mortgages and our rents and our houses. So we tell our students, do the work and learn from every work you can. So I'm not saying that there's good or bad work. I'm saying that there was work that in my life I wanted to do rooted in its deep idea of purpose. Um, and so we've done that. I think with Tagala Productions and every project that I've been able to partner with different companies and production teams, um, we have always asked, why are we doing this? And is it, worth, is it worth doing it? Is it worth telling the story? Not because again, any piece of theater is not worthy, but because we are investing our life and our time and our efforts in it. So we want to be rooted in the purpose. And I believe that we've done that in every single production we've done with Sagal Productions. That's great. Yeah, and I really, I really definitely feel that now that, you know, theater has been kind of taken away from us, you can really appreciate, you know, the, the why of why you're doing it. You yeah. Know? As opposed to before, everything you know could be super hectic, and you wouldn't be able to tap into the purpose of why you're doing it. I and and, and that pure now. entertainment doesn't lack purpose, you right? Yeah. Like it, it, it's like I have great friends who are wonderful masters at doing very entertaining theater, which you could then make a case, but is it purposeful? And the the answer is yes. Right, because we need to go to the theater and laugh and just have a good time and forget that this year has happened. <laughs> like that's as valuable as going and seeing Come From Away, for example, that deeply roots its purpose in reminding us the importance of what 9-11 was. Right. So like I think that there's room for both and, and there's purpose in both. Um, and one doesn't take away from the other. However, my behavior, my psyche, my soul requires that I ask myself, why am I saying this? Why am I singing this? And, and I think that that's true to anything you do. So purpose is all around our theater, but it's also a choice we make. Are we purposeful in our work or are we just getting by? Yeah, and I think your work really, it, it, it shows when you're watching it because in every movement and in every detail, there is purpose rooted in everything that you craft. So it is, it's amazing. You can definitely tell the thought that you put into it. Thank you, thank you. Well, the Axel Road Theater, which is where we met, has been an incredible experiment um, in how to do that. Um, I, I could say so many things. Is it okay if I go there? 
Sure. Because, you know, when, when I started, I, I come from a kind of a path of original shows, right? Like in the Heights, Woman on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown, um, even Rocky, although it was done in Europe, it was being discovered um, in the States and how to give it to the New York audience. So it felt like we were workshopping it and developing it for, for New York. Um, on your feet is I, all those shows are brand new shows that I've been able to be not only involved as a performer but around the creative teams and learning of how to make theater from the developmental pr perspective so when Andrew the Prisco comes to me and offers me doing in the heights at the Axel Rod that, that was my first project there it was an opportunity actually for me to think through the show that I'd already done both as part of the creative team as a performer, how do I rethink it? Because I was already scheduled to go to Washington DC to do it. And I wanted to do it bilingual and I wanted to change the nuances of the language per character so that we could represent Mexican community, Puerto Rican community, Dominican community, Honduran community, Guatemaltecan community, communities. And so I wanted to revisit the show to rethink, oh, what would I do different? So it became like a workshop for me into something that I was very familiar with and thinking on how to take it in a different path. So immediately the Axel Rudd Theater became a place to explore purpose and, and process, right? And how to reinvent quote unquote, the wheel on something that you think you know. Um, and then the next project we did, um, all of a sudden he comes to me and he's like, hey, um, would you ever consider doing rack time? And I was like, I have never in my life thought about doing rack time, but here I was as somebody labeled me the first immigrant to direct and choreograph a production of rack time, quote unquote. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what they said at the time. And it challenged me to think around, you know, what this show represented and what I wanted to say with it. And of course the show says what it says. It has so much to give um, Aaron and, and Lynn um, uh, um, sorry, Stephen and Lynn, I don't know why I said Aaron. Lynn and Stephen um, created such a wonderful, you know, score that speaks for itself. But in my hands, I felt like I, I can go deeper into what the immigrant experience is if you're labeling me as the immigrant director or choreographer that's about to tell the story. And so it gave me so much permission. Um, it's funny because the other day I did a podcast that I did not really recognize as a podcast because I was actually talking to students. And I was talking about this and I, when I heard it as a podcast, I felt that I was being so cocky and it wasn't really what I meant. It was that I was talking to this group of humans who are learning theater and I wanted to give them the fired up, passionate sort of version of what the story is to me. And when I heard it as a podcast where you're not re really hearing the feedback from the students in return, it just felt like, ah! <laughs> but really, I, 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 I feel and I felt all the things that I was sharing with those students because I feel very privileged, very lucky that I know, you know, Lynn and Steven and I can go back and say, hey, I'm thinking about this material in this way. And they can say, go ahead, dream away. Right. And so the same happens within the heights. Lynn, I have this idea or Andy, I have this idea. Go ahead, dream away. Um, and so I've, I've been very fortunate to be in the room where it happens and to be able to use what I've learned in those rooms or the relationship I build in a way of, okay, how do I dream this now? Um, and so I think Axelrod has been a great experiment at that with Ragtime, with Aida, um, recently with Matilda. Again, um, I realized that my purpose is often political, right? Like Matilda, it's like, again, I look around, I look around, I use the term reinventing the wheel but I don't mean it like I'm trying to reinvent the wheel. It's like, wait, I have to go deep into the root. What is the root of this for me? And so Matilda became the story of a immigrant in her own house. And then the librarian, you know, all of a sudden I cast a Mexican immigrant that came to the United States looking for opportunities. And she's the person that gives the first book. And I kept her heritage, her, the actress's heritage, we gave it to the Iberian heritage. And it, that, that story all of a sudden means so much more to me as a storyteller, because, you know, we're all of a sudden echoing not only the story that's in the book, but the stories that are also around the people that are telling the story in front of your eyes. And so it takes triple layers of meaning 
right? And I think that that's valuable and it keeps giving people and characters and stories a voice that becomes louder and more relevant to a lot of communities. And I, I'm very grateful of Axara Theater for giving me that and for always letting me sort of almost practice what then I go and, and I do even bolder going to Washington DC at Gala, right? Because the last production I did in Gala was um, Fame. And, and so I utilize a lot of this immigrant topics in Fame, right? And in the way that we present the high school um, of performing arts in, in, in a way of what happened if we're only serving a Latino population in this high school this year. And it changes everything. So anyway, that's that's what I mean with purpose. Sophie, I hope that I answered your question. You too, Brandon. That was great. <laughs> that was, that was so good. <laughs> well, and you also touched upon my next question. It was just a little bit about um, asking about some of your most recent big successes on Broadway, including um, your role as, on the creative team as assistant choreographer or associate choreographer, and then in the ensemble and in the Heights, and then also being in um, Gloria Estevan's On Your Feet. So I just wanted to know if you can touch a little bit upon those two experiences and any others you wanted to talk about. Of course. Well, in the Heights, like I said, it's 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 personal, so 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 personal to me. Um, it's something that I cry even thinking about it because I love it. I love what it did for the Latino community. I did the, the doors that it opened for a team like Tommy Kale, Alex Lacamoire, Andy Black and Bueller, Lin Manuel Miranda, Cara Alegria, you know, all of them, Bill Sherman, like all of them have gone out to do incredible, incredible, important, relevant work in our, in our world, especially that team going back and doing Hamilton. You know, Hamilton has changed the, the curse of theater in so many, so many ways. Um, and, and as Andy was saying yesterday when we were teaching class together, like there wouldn't be Hamilton if there wasn't in the Heights. That was, that was their high school project that led to their college master studies, you know? And so um, it, in a way, a lot of us benefit from that exploration, which for me is way, way more than an exploration. It, it's my life you know, in the Heights is, is, is the way that my entire path expanded into everything that I think and believe theater is and can be today. Um, so that's, that's that. And then on your feet, it's, it's another kind of validation and process because again, I come in from the ensemble, but being around Marco Santana, Maria Torres, Jerry Mitchell, Sergio Trujillo, who was the, the creative team, and all of them, people that I admire and I know and I work with them. So I was able to be in the process of pre-production and contribute my, my, my body and my thinking and my style to the show. And then, you know, I end up leaving the show to go do something else. And all of a sudden I get this incredible opportunity, a phone call by nonetheless, but Jerry Mitchell to see if I would be interested in directing the show for him as associate director in Holland, because he was working on a show. And Andy Senor, who was his original associate director was actually putting the tour up. And how incredible for me to feel like I am being honored and consider and put in my hands the responsibility of sharing the heritage and the culture on the, on the show um, in a Dutch production. And so that became the, the sort of the last trampling thing in saying, yeah, I have to go and direct and choreograph shows. This is what I, I am meant to do right now in my life. And I have the support of people like Jerry Mitchell and the validation of people and, and the support and like open path, like Sergio sends me so much work to do, you know? So it's my teacher, my mentor, my supporter, my, my partner, um, you know, Latinos saying, let's go, let's put our, our, our accent in the work that we're doing. So Sergio is that and Andy is that. And I feel so, so blessed that I get to learn from these masters and I, I get to, to emulate their path and also continue to put my own sound in the work that I do. That's great, I love that. That is so cool. Um, so you've touched on this a little bit, but during COVID, you know, obviously we can't be together, we can't be creating. How did you take your creativity and your message and kind of put it into a more virtual platform? Well, I think Revolución Latina is the first thing. Revolución Latina, it's a circle, 
you know, as you give to people the best of you, you also receive the best of so many people, right? And um, it's always been the case that with Revolution Latina, I end up learning a lot of what's next in my life. So the moment that COVID hit, I knew that we had a responsibility to our community. So we started providing free services. Little did I know that in those online free services, I was gonna learn how to work on Zoom and I was gonna learn how to manage breakout rooms and split rehearsals and whatnot. So we ended up doing a summer camp with over 300 kids from Latin America and United States. Um, so again, I'm here I am exercising that and boom, changed to I need now work, creative work. And so now I've been choreographing a production online that is going to air in December, a production of the show Disenchanted. And, uh, and then I happen to be, have the opportunity of working again as an associate director and a co-choreographer with Sergio Trujillo on a production of Viva Broadway, created for the Broadway League and Playbill. So we put a lot of Latinx stars on one night of a performance. And so I had a little bit of the know-how of how to work the feel of online work because of my nonprofit. And so um, that's, what, that's what I've been sort of doing and learning and applying. And now the dreams are endless because on Monday um, I start my own Salgado Productions musical theater workshop that they, it's it's all inspiring fame. And David De Silva is gonna come on the last day and see the work that we're doing with our students and how we're putting some material together in scene work and in song work and in choreography work. And we're doing it all online because that's what we have now. We gotta rethink the purpose of our art and how we gonna do it. And so here we are. That's awesome. You are staying busy and creative and engaged and Thank you. you're engaging others, which is truly the most important and amazing part of the work that you're continuing to do despite current conditions. Um, which also leads me into my next question sort of about, you know, you are an uh, amazing inspiration to, you know, the future of this industry and, and future artists. So what are, you know, is, the advice that you can offer uh, students and young artists and, and folks trying to go out into the industry in today's time, um, you know, what can you offer up to them, especially, you know, despite the circumstances? Well, first of all, thank you for that. Um, it, it sometimes feels like a big responsibility, but I am, I am honored to have it. Um, and I will say the same thing I always say, you know, it's, 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 there's, there's one thought, there's really only one thought I can share and that's training is everything. We have to be ready for when the opportunity comes and that continues to be relevant and real every time in very different forms. How do you train now during COVID times, right? What are the things that you need as an, as an actor, as a singer, um, as a dancer, as a general performer, to know if you're, if this is the outlet in which you are now auditioning, this is the outlet in, where, in which you're now presenting yourself, it requires your training. Also requires your training for when this is done, hopefully soon, and we get back to the studio. Are you ready to take on the challenge? Have you been able to still working on your point and your developing and your passe and your kick grand bop on, right? On, on your vocal notes and your performing acting skills and whatnot. Um, all of it requires training all the time. So the best thing I can ever and forever potentially share is training is everything. And I think I share it because I also need to remind myself every time that I cannot think I know anything and I must always stay active in training, whether that is reading directing books, whether that is creating choreography, whether that is studying music and its intention and you know the power that music has and how music evolves um, because it evolves all the time, even now with COVID is evolving. Um, I need to study that. And so I have to share to the world that training is everything because I have to also remind myself that I have to keep on training. Um, and so that's, I think, the best message that I can, that I can share. That's awesome. <laughs> I totally feel that right now. You know, um, I'm studying to be a musical theater artist um, in school. 
And it's just like sitting here waiting. Like I'm so ready to just like get out and go yeah. and start and create. Yeah. But there's no reason to wait. And that's the thing, right? I, I, I'm not, not to throw you under the bus with waiting, <laughs> but, but like, there's no reason to wait. Like we only have now. And the thing I try to keep telling myself is, well, the books are right there. Like I flew from Puerto Rico, from New York to Puerto Rico and I brought my books and they're sitting there for me waiting to get them, right? Because there's always a book waiting for you to be in your hands and to, to study it. There's always a song for you to explore deeper. Like, um, like three days ago, I went to the boxing gym, which is one of my favorite training camps. And um, I was there and I was like saying to myself, I'm home, I'm home. And then as I said, I'm home, I remind myself of the song, I'm home from In the Heights. And I was like, I got to visit that song. I got to study that song. The songs mean something now that is very different than what it meant 10 years ago to where I am in life. And so there's always something waiting for us to take it. Therefore, we shouldn't be waiting on acting upon. Remember that acting is doing. Ultimately, you're training and acting if you're daring to do. So the other thing I can say to the students is go ahead and do. Don't wait. There's nothing to wait for. Right now in the living room of your house, right now in your bathroom, right now in your bedroom, right now in front of your building, if you're in New York or in front of your apartment or in front of your house, you can go and get doing. And that's what you need to do. So don't wait. Awesome. Love it. That's <laughs> so, great. Yeah, that's awesome. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Um, is there anything else you have coming up that you would just like to promote or plug social media, your production company? And yeah, I think um, my, my company, Sagal Productions at the moment, you know, we're, I'm really excited that I have a, a team working and creating a new web page. I hope uh, that it's up soon. Um, if you're watching this now, perhaps it's already ready and you should go to salgadoproductions.com and check that out. Um, we're doing, like I said, some educational training programs through Salgado Productions as well. But the most important thing is um, now in November, we have our dance -thon for Revolución Latina, which is our fundraising event. You get to dance with us for four hours. We have a lot of people coming in and teaching different dance classes, a lot of celebration of dance um, in different forms, including an, um, a celebration of Jose Limon's legacy through the Limon Company. Um, so the Dance-a-thon, you, you can know more about Revolución Latina going to www.revolucionlatina.org and that's written in Spanish, Revolución with a C latina.org and um, you can also help us continue to make a difference so that would be my commercial <laughs> and also the 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 project that you're working on viva broadway with sergio you, yeah when is that and can that happened talk? already that oh, happened already. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that happened october 1st and it was only uh, on air um for four days so unfortunately it's done okay um, but it was a great beautiful project that brought a lot of people together actually um it was it was the last chance i had in life to work with a dear friend doreen montalvo who maybe you know brandon because she did mamma mia at the axel red theater and yeah unfortunately she she left us a little too soon in, in this earth um and so doreen montalvo is an incredible inspirational story um she made her broadway debut after she was 40 years old and now with revolution latina we're going to start a scholarship that will keep her legacy and her name alive, that is particularly focused on people over 30 who are yet dreaming of making a Broadway debut and we, are, we wanna support them with, with free training. So we will, we will be doing that scholarship on her behalf, um, hopefully for many years to come. That's amazing. Excellent, really, really amazing. Well, thank you, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been an amazing interview with amazing insight and words and inspiration. And it, I'm just so excited for you and everything that you're doing and putting out there so much good energy into the world and into the arts community. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm proud of you and I'm proud of you guys. Now I get to meet you too, Sophie. So <laughs> looking forward to you guys adding up to the, to the spice of the world, you know, with arts and, and Brandon, at some point you have to come on board also and, and work with us in Sagal Productions. So.
I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you so much. <laughs> of course, of course. All right, have a wonderful day, okay? Stay, stay safe. You too, Thank have you fun too. and good luck with that patio. Or the <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, if you heard that, that's my dad working really hard and I was supposed to be sweating with him there. So I'm glad <laughs> to be here with you as well. Thank you. Thank Ciao. you.